Now, in a special investigation, the BBC has discovered that Scottish companies are being targeted by Russian organised crime gangs in a series of cyber attacks. The police have warned that many businesses which have been hit may never recover. And it's estimated that last year cybercrime crossed the UK economy around £80 billion. Our investigations correspondent Samantha Poling has this exclusive report. More than 80% of people in Scotland now have internet access and much of our daily lives are lived online. Yet our precious data is fast becoming one of the most lucrative criminal commodities stolen by stealth in organised cyber attacks. One in five internet users says that last year someone tried fraudulently to get hold of their banking details. Now the criminals behind these attacks are after two things, your money and your personal information for future attacks. Most attacks are through spam emails which contain hidden viruses, allowing criminals access to our computers and information such as bank details and passwords. The hackers then sell that information to organised crime gangs who use it to defraud the victims, taking out store cards, loans, buying cars, even remortgaging people's houses. This man is a foot soldier in the criminal trade. And I can earn more in, say, for instance, sometimes in a day than I could earn in a month selling drugs. You know, on a good week, you could can, you can be talking up to £35,000, you know what I mean? And this is literally from buying profiles mm. on people, buying data. Buying data. My information. Exactly having somebody's is. date of birth. Yep, having somebody's date of birth, enough. postcode, and all that information is just it's so, you know, it's so valuable. Half the country wouldn't realise what people can do with this information. You and guys like you are the ones who are on the ground committing the final act of the fraud. That's exactly right. So the most cash you've sat down at the end of the day and looked at has been what? Probably about 20,000. <laughs> He's at the bottom end of the criminal ladder. I wanted to meet those at the top. This man ran one of Britain's biggest gang of fraudsters. His job was to buy the stolen data for his team to use, the information often already rated by the hackers. If you have a grade one, for instance, that means that the information, the likelihood is, it's not been sold to anyone else and you would pay more for that information. This was data that you were dealing with and that was a victim. It's a fresh victim, exactly, yeah. Whereas if you get a grade three, the likelihood is that it's been sold to 10 or 15 people. Which means the person has been stung. Which means the person's been stung, correct. You can steal someone's house from them. You can steal it from underneath them and there's nothing they can do about it. Does anyone really realise what data is and what criminals do with it, you know? It's the, it's the new currency. Just as the internet has no borders, neither too do cyber criminals. At this software company, I'm shown giant screens which track all reported global spam and malware attacks almost in real time. Behind each attack, a criminal organization. Each of these dots represents a new, fresh spam campaign. Uh, so, for example, here, a DHL or FedEx delivery. So that's a note saying, we're trying to deliver a package, but we need some information from you. And of course, no one can ever remember what they ordered from Amazon, so they assume it's true, go to the website, type in their personal information, uh, or get infected. It's clear from James's map where much of the criminal activity is coming from. It's estimated that last year, the world's cyber criminals made more than $15 billion, Russian cyber criminals responsible for almost a third. They are moving their attention from infecting simple home users to infecting an attack to corporations. The UK is one of the hotspots in terms of attacks. Nobody is protected, nobody is safe. If someone wants to steal information from these concrete organizations inside the United Kingdom, for example, it is possible. Kaspersky figures show the UK is now the third biggest victim in the world in terms of the most recent persistent attacks. 
You have seen a large number of businesses been targeted across Scotland in a multitude of sectors, certainly in the financial sector and agriculture, but predominantly in the small and medium enterprises, up to 200 employees. A lot of businesses may not recover from a cyber attack simply because it's stolen personal data, it's stolen customer data, and it could cause real problems for the viability of that business in the long term. Trying to get figures for the number of Scottish businesses being targeted is difficult. Few report attacks for fear of reputational damage. It's across the board. We're seeing small shops, one-man operators. We're seeing IT companies um, being targeted. We're seeing some public sector bodies. We've seen local authorities. We've seen some agencies and, and, and other public bodies targeted as well. So the, the scale is, you know, it's not just traditional business. It's you know, anybody or any organisation that has an online presence. The, the risk to the Scottish economy is huge if we're trying to build a Scotland that is safe to do business online and to invest in, whether it be from tech companies or from you know, other overseas investors. If Scotland is, you know, lacks basic cyber hygiene, if you like, then, then people won't come here. You can see more on Sam Pulling's investigation, gangsters.com, in full tomorrow night on BBC One Scotland, just after half past ten. Well, joining me now in the studio is Professor Bill Buchanan, who runs the Centre for Computer Security at Edinburgh's Napier University. Tell me how much at risk we are here in Scotland, because it's not just businesses, is it, where our, the very infrastructure that we all rely on every day could be at risk from cyber criminals. Yeah, I, I think we need to understand that it's a changing world. We're, mo we're moving from an industrial age into an information age, and really our whole infrastructure is dependent now on the internet. Uh, Scotland typically has different risks to uh, the UK in, in general. Much of cyber investment has went into to London and very little has come north of the, of the border. And Does obviously, that mean we're less at risk? Uh, it means that we have different industries in Scotland. We are very dependent upon the finance sector, which is actually very buoyant just now around Glasgow and Edinburgh. We have the oil and gas industry in, in the north uh, of Scotland. And obviously as we start to put things like healthcare, health and social care records online, then those industries could become exposed to, to, these, to these threats. But it shouldn't be something that actually stops us from moving into the information age because Scotland has an opportunity, being quite small, for us all to work together on, on these threats. I mean, we all understand what happens if your own personal data is breached. People can impersonate you, spend money on your credit cards and that kind of thing. What, why would criminals want to target NHS records or some of our big infrastructure in this country? Uh, well, well, there's obviously information in there. If you see the large companies like Facebook and Google, Microsoft and so on, are very keen to understand how we live, what we do when we buy our coffee, what, what things we like and so on. If you go on to Amazon, Amazon will generally be looking at what goods that you like to buy at certain times of the year and so on. When we have store cards, the supermarkets will use those store cards to profile us as, as users. So really as we move into a big data era, uh, but data is going to become the key driver. And what we see is that uh, uh, companies are, are collecting security incidents around breaches, but they can also use the same data in terms of their, their own business and they can use it to benefit uh, the business to, to be able to look at uh, the, the analytics around their sales and so on. So how devastating can a single attack be? Uh, it can be massive. If you look at the Adobe hack, that was 150 million accounts that were breached, credit card details, usernames and passwords. Uh, it should be noted that users have got some liability here in that 2 million people selected 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 as their password, closely followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then by QWERTY and password and so on. So it's not just that uh, the defence uh, organisations such as the NCA and Police Scotland are out there defending us and our organisations such as our banks, but also that the users need to understand when they receive an email from the HMRC, they should really check that that really is from the HMRC and it isn't a phishing email which can then lead to a whole lot of uh, problems. Yes, it's up to all of us to make sure that our data security is a little bit more secure than it is for many of us, otherwise we've only got ourselves to blame. Without a doubt. Bill Buchanan, thanks very much Thank for you. coming in to talk to us. Now, we all know that our energy bills keep going up. You may not be keeping quite so close an eye on the whole